Doop, 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 doop. All right, we are going to go ahead and let people in. Do I have to let people in? No, yes. I think you auto let people in. Yeah, it's auto letting people in, which I'm grateful for. All right, Love fantastic. It. So I don't have to worry about that. All right, uh, as we do this and we get uh, everybody starting to walk in, we are going to uh, ask everybody a question and Katie and I are going to answer this. And actually, Chris, I'm going to rope you into this too, uh, which is what is your favorite childhood movie? Katie, we're going to start with you. Well, okay, so I have a different answer than we talked about. So my favorite childhood movie was actually the original Parent Trap, uh, oh. like way old one. Mm -hmm. Loved it. I always wanted to be an identical twin. I kept asking my parents growing up. I was like, do I have an identical twin? They were like, you would have known this by now. But, you know, weirder things have happened in life. Children get separated at birth. Uh, my mom was like, I'm pretty sure I would know if I gave birth to two. Um, but uh, another good childhood movie, Back to the Future. And just have to mention that because this week we had Back to the Future Day, October 21st, uh, when they go into the future. But I saw it at the uh, local Broadway theater last night uh, here in Las Vegas. Wow. Was it packed? Uh, it was packed. I have to say, uh, it was actually not good. Like my husband and I love going to the theater. We love being season ticket holders. And yeah. that was really not good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've actually ever seen a movie in a theater like that. And in, in like, well, it was a musical, right? So like back wait, to the future. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Wait, it's a timeout. Wait, wait. <laughs> I, I missed that whole thing. They actually turned it into a musical. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. that would be horrific. Oh. It was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was. I, I am so going to be YouTubing the hell out of that later and see what clips I can find. Chris, what about you, man? What is your uh, favorite childhood movie? It was Aladdin. Um, oh. I think, like, I think it's Robin Williams was my favorite, like just being the genie and as cool as he was. And then- hearing all the cool stuff that he did to be the genie, like taking like huge pay cuts to just still play that role. Um, but yeah, Aladdin, 100%. So we've got Lion King, Jaws. Katie Lion. just said, I love the Goonies. Um, yeah. Yeah, from a, from a, a childhood perspective for me, um, honestly, Diane, I'm probably going to have to go with you. Uh, the Goonies is still one of my favorite movies of all times. Uh, it aged incredibly well, which is very surprising for movies of that time. Um, but that was just such an instrumental movie for me just because where I lived, there were all sorts of places that were weird to adventure. Uh, and so that's what all of my friends did. We'd go into like abandoned warehouses and, you know, into the woods and the deep, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And I, so we were always hoping to find, find gold, which as you can tell by what I'm doing now for a living, we didn't find gold. So anyway, all right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get rolling. Uh, if you don't know who I am right now, uh, this is, I'm Matt Haller. I'm co-founder of Proud Mouth. Uh, my partner, Kirk Lowe, and I started this in 2017. I'm also known as your friendly neighborhood podcasting and influence expert. Next up, we've got Katie. Katie. It's me. I am the founder of Advisor Video Marketing, uh, chief video officer, because we all like fun, random titles. Been doing this since 2020. Been in the professions since 2006. Also have my private pilot's license, because why not? Uh, and a degree in photography. <laughs> Chris. Uh, I'm an account manager at Proudmouth and um, just a really cool guy that's here. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. I totally agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, all right. So today what we're going to do, we always do this. We want to make sure that we're going to be covering, uh, giving you guys a preview of what, what's going to happen here. So this is the overall idea it is uh, now Katie is the video expert, right? We are not video experts here. Uh, she is the one who actually has a course in our PodRocket Influence Academy to help all of you create really, really great video. Plus she's got her program, which we will talk about in a little bit. But the overall goal is, is it used to be that you could just have podcasting or you could just have video. Now it is an and, it is not an or. Or if you're shooting podcasts, it's got to be a video. And our goal today is for you to find out not only what to do with some of that video, but also how to shoot really great video. And we're going to have real life examples and all of that sort of stuff. So video is, and I'm just going to give you some quick statistics here. YouTube is the second largest podcast player in the world, in the world. Uh, people are generally 64% of people are watching podcasts on their second screen at work. And if that doesn't wake you all up for the, the missed opportunity, for those of you who aren't doing this, 
that's that is absolutely huge. Um, and we also know, and Katie actually posts about this all the time. She hosts a, a, a weekly marketing uh, discussion on on LinkedIn to talk about all of these sorts of things too. Um, that video is king, podcasting is queen. That's just that's the world that we live in right now. Uh, we solve both because we create video podcasts and audio podcasts. If you want to focus specifically just on video uh, and creating your own short form video and longer form video, Katie's program is absolutely fantastic. But we like working together. And the reason why we like working together is because we know that if you are really, really great behind the camera and the microphone, more people are going to engage with your stuff. And we're going to give you some value right out of the gate. And I'm going to turn this over to Katie because Katie is the person who actually helped me change a bunch of my stuff. If you guys all go back and look at our early videos that I was shooting, I was in the corner. The camera was too close. Uh, I was very poorly. Actually, I wasn't very poorly lit, but I was poorly lit. And then after we brought Katie in to shoot the course for the Academy, we made huge changes. So Katie, let's go ahead and talk about some of the big things that we need to pay attention to. Yeah. And so this goes, uh, Matt, for podcasting. It also goes even for your virtual meetings, right? If you guys are like, hey, I don't have a podcast yet, but like you just want to make sure you're coming across well in video. Uh, just a couple of quick things to think about. I am standing up right now. Standing up just naturally gives you more energy. So if you're like, hey, on a podcast, like sometimes your energy starts to drain, you trail off a little bit. Um, even if you're an introvert, totally cool. But I would encourage all of you at least practice doing a video or a virtual meeting standing, right? if you're doing a podcast, try it. Like I guarantee you're going to have more energy come through. Your hand gestures are much more natural when you're standing as well. So in that video podcast, right, you're like really more engaging with the audience. And then kind of have some of that eye contact, right? It's a podcast. Maybe you're doing a podcast with somebody in your office, you're chatting with them, totally cool. But picture you're actually talking to one person listening to your podcast, like make some of that eye contact because humans, we need to connect, right? We still have that fight or flight. Like I'm looking at you, they're looking at you. And Matt, when you were talking about, you know, the power of YouTube, podcasting, I just quickly want to mention if, you know, most people haven't heard of, it's called like a parasocial relationship. And so mm -hmm. that's like a one-way relationship. And that's what a lot of people, your audience is doing. And that's what you want your audience to be doing is building a parasocial relationship with you. And that's what we're going to keep talking about is when they see you on video, right? They're seeing your hand gestures, like your personality is coming through in a way, you know, above and beyond just hearing your voice in a podcast. They're building a relationship with you. They're building that know, like, and trust. So look at the camera, make that eye contact smile for so many people, right? Whatever your resting face is smiling again, human connection, huge difference there. Well, and we've got more, right? So let's let's continue because I just talked about some of the issues that we were having. But, but Chris, Chris was messing with me when we first got on the video because he's got massive control over his camera, which is just absolutely fantastic. So Chris can make all of the mistakes when it comes to a camera by just clicking a button. But Katie, let's continue with some of the other big mistakes. Yeah, and we're going to see some of these as we look in the examples. Uh, with love, we'll point those out as we're looking at those examples. This camera positioning, people, y'all don't live in the Sistine Chapel. We don't need to see your ceilings. Tilt those cameras down, like all of you. And the easiest way to think about this is that you should always have more room below your chin than above your head. So for all of you doing meetings and hanging out on your podcast down here, it's weird. It's just weird, right? Tilt it down because we're trying to mimic what it feels like to be in person. Um, Matt got great framing there. Chris got great framing. Um, and then bad lighting, right? Matt, your lighting was not that bad in the beginning, but yeah. you should always be the best lit thing in your frame, right? We want to see you. Try not to have a window behind you, but if you do, still make sure that you are better lit than that window. Um, those fake backgrounds, man, they hurt my soul. They really do. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about like using your background for your brand, right? My brand is colorful. Whether you know that or not, you do now because I didn't even have to say it, right? I have as much color as possible. I've got neon nails. Like I think the world is better with color, but that's not everybody's brand, right? Mm -hmm. Matt, you're always on brand. You've got your proud mouth stuff there. You know, we're going to look at a few of those examples of use your environment to reinforce your personal brand and your company brand, right? Whichever angle uh, you're coming from there. And those just fake Zoom blurs, just please pick up your laundry, like do whatever you got to do. <laughs> <Turn them off. laughs> 
killing me, people. A uh, couple other things, please, for those of you like recording anything, do not record in Zoom. Again, another thing, not a lot of things hurt my soul. These things hurt my soul. Like the quality of recording in Zoom is not good. It does not reflect well on you. And I always think back to Matt, you know, like when everybody was in the office, like way before COVID, the amount of money people spent on interior decorators and artwork and furniture and like all this time and effort. And then it's like everybody went virtual, built a whole bunch of bad habits and never paused to be like, let's actually fix this and make sure that we are reflecting our brand Poor quality in things like recording on Zoom, that poor lighting, poor audio, right? Definitely if you're doing a podcast and even on video, audio is actually the most important thing. So again, just a few of these things, a few of these little, little tweaks can make a huge difference in leveling up your video, your podcast, and even those virtual meetings. And I, I'm just going to touch on the, the audio thing too, very quickly. Uh, so, so Katie said, you know, there's a couple of things that drive her crazy. One of the things that drives me absolutely crazy is the Yeti microphone. Listen, uh, if there was one thing that I wish would burn in eternal hellfire and hit every circle of Dante's hell, it would actually be that microphone. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, because the internal components of it are actually trash. But the other reason is none of you know how to set it up correctly. So listen, just go ahead and buy a directional condenser. That's what Katie's using. That's what I'm using. Directional condenser microphone, which is going to help reduce all of the external noise. So you don't have to soundproof everything. You can just have the right microphone with the right background, the right lighting, and you're really going to be hitting on all uh, everything. So, okay. So how do you do this? Right? So, so we're going to give a couple of examples. Uh, and so actually I need to get on top of that because I've actually got uh, links to some of these. Uh, so this is simply retirement. So hold on one second. I'm copying the. But um, while you're pulling that up, Matt, yes, you know, one of the things that, that I want to just talk about here is it's consistency across all your platforms. And so one of the things and Matt, you probably see it as well, is I see a lot of advisors that are like, hey, I have my company name and then I have a podcast with a completely different name and brand and everything. And I'm like, don't do that because you're going to confuse your audience and it's going to feel like a bait and switch. So I love this example of, right, whether it's, you know, the colors, the font, even if you have a different name, but you've got that consistency and branding, people are going to look at it and know that it's aligned. Well, and, and so I think this is one of the reasons why, and this is going to be wildly shameless, uh, but one of the reasons why working with an organization like ours, a lot of people, Katie, don't remember uh, that Kirk Lowe, before he became the you know co-founder of Proudmouth with me, he was the marketing and branding dude in financial services. It was everything that we built was so important to make sure that that brand consistency was, you know, and if you look at this next thing here, we're still continuing with this, right? There's still the same look and feel, everything from, from the border here here uh, around the videos. And by the way, this is the stuff that Chris does for us and our team does in the video production, but it's very consistent when it comes to branding. Um, it, if you don't have that, I love how you said bait and switch, Katie, because I really do feel like they do feel that they've been jarred a little bit off center. Like, oh, I want to feel the Eric Blakeness, right? But now I'm feeling something else and I don't really understand and that's why through our discovery process, and Katie, I know that you do this with your clients too, because this is actually some of the stuff that you talk on your, your weekly thing, is that consistency brand, that language, that feeling that needs to be ubiquitous across every single solitary thing that you do. What else you got on these, Katie? Well, I'll say, you know, and that's why like Proudmouth is really a great example, right? When you guys launch different things, you know, Pod Rocket Academy and Influence Accelerator, even though it's a different, everybody instantly knows. Yeah. We don't even need to see Proudmouth. You've got that solid branding, the colors, the look and feel. So again, I just want to make sure we're not shying away from having a different name or, you know, slight brand for something, but that brand look and feel um, is, is the big thing. Uh, but as we look at this, I mean, Matt, I, I'm looking, seeing a little bit of a not great <laughs> Uh, some framing <laughs> issues here, right? Cause here, look at this. Like when we look, it's like, it's like, he's like falling down a well, yeah. right? Like I kind of want to like reach through the camera and be like, oh man, like I got you. I'm, I'm picking you up. Right. Yeah. That's not the like confident professional, you know, that we want to feel like we're sitting across from a table or, or a desk. And then again, when the lighting isn't good, it's like, well, your eye is just naturally always drawn to the brightest part, right? So then your eye is kind of straining. You're like, what am I looking at? Make it as easy as possible to consume and enjoy your content. 
well, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to, now this is a client of ours and I know Eric oh, yeah. well, I just literally talked to him about this, but this is the, this is the, the word. Well, hold on. There it is. This one. Look at this. That hey. violates everything that Katie was just saying. Oh, Look at the size. It's, it, it, what is he showing off there? Yeah. Eric. Let's let's fix this, man. Just tilt that camera down. That's all you gotta do, tilt it down and have the camera right at eye level. That's the other thing. All all of you guys, when you're like, look, I'm like, I I don't need to be counting your chins in meetings. I don't need to be counting your nose hairs, right? Like, let me let me not be so distracted. So like, the majority of humans are visual people, yeah. right? So when we have all these visual distractions, our brains are like not paying attention to what's actually going on. So. Yeah, be it. And it's also, it's good for your posture. It's good for your back, right? Right at eye level and just tilt it up, right? So it should be right there. You shouldn't even have to think about, you know, your ceiling or anything. It should just happen naturally. I I, I have something that I was going to grab, but it's literally too far away right now. It's this, this thing that you put your laptop on if you're using your laptop camera that you can raise it like a foot either way. It's real and it's really, really sturdy. I'll try to find it in... in if you want it, you can DM me. Um, but it's it's really, really fantastic. Well, then I just have to mention on that, if you're going to do it, right, have like a Bluetooth keyboard and everything. People are like, oh, I'm not going to have my thing up here. But the other thing, Matt, make sure you don't look like you're constantly in an earthquake, right? So a lot of times when people are like on their laptop, like everything is shaking because they're like really animated. And I'm like, whoa, man, are you okay? Like, how's it going? So again, all these little distractions... They're very easy fixes. They are. And, and I love, I thank you for, for bringing that up. And this is, you know, so that's one of the reasons why I like that platform that I purchased because it, it doesn't jostle absolutely everything. But I, I have to talk about something uh, very quickly and then we're going to use this example. But um, when, when we first, Kirk and I started doing video right out of the gate, um, he said, Matt, you have to sit down. Uh, because I can't stand up when I'm podcasting because I can't sit still like at all. And so I'm all in Kirk was like, dude, you're driving me crazy. I'm moving around. I'm like, it's like, yeah, it's like I'm dancing. Right. Or I'm raising in my lowering myself. Right. So uh, I, I, I bought a very specific chair that still allows me to be gesturing without having a massive body movement. Uh, so anyway, um, all right. So this is another thing. And, and Katie, you talk about this a lot when it comes to storytelling. This is just such a wonderful example. And I actually put the link to uh, his podcast, but we talk about the perfect content formula, storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. How do you feel about the storytelling component? I love it because we like before we even click anything we're already seeing a story right we don't need, we don't have to read anything we don't have to click anything we're instantly like we've got his family and your eye you're like i want to click that right yeah. you just see it and you're like how cute is that it's something different and for those that are like why are we using this as an example well jeremy's great um and he's got a podcast so we're going to show more examples of him but this is where we're talking about like not only recording your podcast on video but leveraging video throughout all of your materials right so this is a video that he puts out every monday and he had his kids join in this one so share a little bit of your life and i know people are like oh look i don't want to share everything i don't want to overshare totally cool like my husband doesn't ever want to be on video that's fine but people still know about me so as you're using video and building that relationship that parasocial relationship to start right think about how you can how you can use it bring other things in um yeah because again i instantly want to watch i mean i did watch this but uh it, it pulls you in it builds that relationship further yeah well so we get asked this question often what is the correct balance between uh professional content and personal content and i go back to a behavioral psychological rule called the four to one rule so for every time that you post four pieces of business related content try to post one thing that's at least to your comfort level when it comes to personal. And and I love, you know, Katie, uh, I've known you for quite a while. Uh, I have actually never met your husband, but I know that you're married and I know what your husband does. So even though he's not on camera, I still feel like I have some of that parasocial relationship with him. And he actually might get uncomfortable if I do ever meet him because I'm going to be like, dude, I feel like I know you, right? <laughs> um, even though he's probably a very private person, but that's the sort of stuff that you need to keep in mind. And when it comes to, this is a very a quintessential Jeremy Hauser post. Yep. He is 
a hundred percent family focused. He's all about his wife and kids. You know, uh, he's all about, you know, patriotism. I mean, it's really, if you look even some of the smaller things here, you know, he's got awards behind him. Uh, you know, he, this is who, not how Dan Sullivan book, American flag, right? It's just really cool stuff. There's so much eye candy in there that it does really draw you in because if you see one connection point within that still frame, you're going to want to be involved in it every more. Okay. So now we are going to bring in our in-house resident expert on how to create the video, how to basically streamline some of the process. So Chris, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to you. I think I already gave you screen sharing opportunity. Oh, we've got questions. Crap. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I can, oh. I can go ahead. Do we want to answer questions? Oh, you, you know, what? Um, let me answer the Drew question. So Drew's got a question. Do you recommend something like the Elgato teleprompter, Katie? Yes. So I, um, the Elgato, it, you know, brands don't really matter. Um, but yes, I love teleprompters. I'm using a teleprompter right now. And again, even if you guys aren't using podcasting, teleprompters are brilliant. If you're in virtual meetings all day long, I do all of my meetings looking at the teleprompter. So it's not just for scripting. I have my huge screen down here mirrored on my phone into the teleprompter. So again, I can easily maintain eye contact. I don't get, you know, eyesore. I don't get like, I think we have a lot more um, mental and maybe even a little bit of like emotional fatigue after being in virtual meetings all day. And then you also don't have to worry about like, where am I looking? And like your webcams here and things down here. So teleprompters, absolutely brilliant. Uh, whether you're scripting or not, they have a ton of very cool uses. And uh, if I can, yes, actually, I will. Matt is a cool. I actually have a, an entire blog post on, uh, you know, why advisors should use teleprompters and the exact step-by-step -step setup. Um, yeah, so so I, while Chris is demoing, you want to throw that in chat? Yep. I just Beautiful. put that. All right, Chris, you can take over? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about switching from or getting away from Zoom, um, one of the tools that we started using to get away from that, right? Because because we were using Zoom. It was a great platform for what it was. Um, but when more focus came to video, we decided we needed to kind of upgrade that system. Um, so Riverside is fantastic. And I can't say enough good things about it. Um, it's one of the main tools that we use for recording. Um, but we also use it for helping us make these clips or um, kind of taking that longer form content and making those bite-sized pieces. Um, so here is just an example um, that we have. I've already gone through and kind of picked a portion um, of the conversation, but ultimately Riverside has the entire episode, if you want to call it an episode, or the entire recording that was done, um, and it has a transcript for it. So whether you want to edit using the timeline down below, which you can easily, or using the transcript, which I find is a little bit easier, you can really piece out the exact spot where you want this clip to start and end. Um, one of the other really great things that you can do is change the aspect ratio or kind of like the format that you're looking mm -hmm. to post on. Um, so this one here, like this is what you would expect on YouTube, right? Big rectangle. Um, it's what most things are recorded in. Um, but for us, what we really like to focus on is the vertical videos. Um, and I say this all the time. If you had a square video in LinkedIn or a vertical video in LinkedIn, the vertical video is going to take up more space. Um, and I call it eye real estate because it's it's taking up more space for your eyes to see. And it's less likely to be scrolled past, which I think is phenomenal. Um, and again, it works across all the different platforms. Um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, for sure, YouTube Shorts, all have adopted this vertical um, 9 by 16 format for content. So if you could pick one, if you really wanted to save time or you wanted to do one video that works everywhere, if you choose this 9 by 16 um, aspect ratio, it's going to work everywhere, which I think is amazing. Chris, uh, can, I, can I say one thing on that? Uh, yeah, cool. All those people who have their camera as close as maybe yours was in the beginning, um, right? And then like they're nine by 16, but it's <laughs> yeah. just like a freakish head filling the whole thing. Just think about that again, as you're thinking about like your framing and everything, Ooh. another reason to have more room below your chin, right? So that we're seeing more of your body and we can crop in. Absolutely. And Matt talks about this all the time too, is um, 
not to be funny, but like, what do you do with your hands? Um, but if you're going to be cropping things into this nine by 16, it's really great to do a lot of your gestures inward um, and kind of staying within your shoulders. You can see Larry is doing that right here um, versus the outward expressions, because then your, your hands just kind of disappear. Right. So if you're counting, don't count up like one, two, three, four, five, like do that in front of you. Um, and it can just lead to a little bit better video. Um, so here we go. So we've gone through, we've highlighted the portions that we don't like, deleted them. Um, if at any point you want to add something back in, you absolutely can. I have it removed, um, but you could just quickly click restore and bring it all back if you wanted to. Um, so what I like to focus on when I'm creating clips or what we like to focus on is if we can, we try and get the question that's being asked in the answer that's being provided. Now, sometimes you don't have as much time, or if you're trying to make this like a YouTube short or you have a like a minute length that you need to stay within, um, although that is gonna change soon, I think we're gonna be able to have YouTube shorts that are longer than a minute, which is amazing. Um, you can take and, and adjust this as you need to. But for us, we like to show the question and the answer, or at least the best part of the answer that we can get. Um, so if well, I were to- yeah, just, Can I interrupt on, on that one more time? Because people, that's probably a question we're going to get, right? Is how long should it be? And that's where, you know, even though YouTube Shorts like going to three minutes, people don't necessarily want to see three minutes. And Chris, I'm sure you're going to touch on this. So sorry for interrupting, but like, this is one of the great benefits of this is like, have more clips, right? You can have lots of 30, 45 second, 60 second clips. So don't try to be like, hey, I'm going to put a two minute and 58 second clip out on social. Like short, let's keep it short. Yeah, short, sweet to the point. Um, sometimes <laughs> we can talk at length on something, but we've really hit it within the first minute. Um, including that extra stuff kind of dilutes the message. Um, so yeah, great point, Katie. Um, cool. So I can hit play. I hope you guys can hear it. Um, We've seen you or heard you say about a person's reading ability can help determine their socioeconomic status. It can really help or, or hinder. And that's a very powerful statement. How can we help impact that? The, the, I guess this is how Book Fairies has really just taken hold because it's just about getting books into people's hands. So what we know is that when children have access to about 20 books in their homes, it can help get them uh, an additional three years more schooling than a child coming from a bookless home. And what's important about that is that really it mitigates um, any of the differences that's coming from a parent's educational level. So our whole understanding is that it's all about increasing book access. Now, is it just about the books? No, of course not. Books are the tool that kids practice to be able to learn how to read. And ultimately, what we're really looking for is to elevate the, the literacy rate within that community. We so Chris, that before you... Uh... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, she's still going. Yeah, so, so one of the cool things, I'm sorry, so she is so good. There were like five exit points there. Yeah. I mean, we could have made that three minutes. We could have made that 30 seconds. And, and man, that is such a good guess. So, because Chris, as I'm watching that, I'm thinking to myself, oh, well, there's a good ending point. Oh my God, you can end it there. So, so from a content creation standpoint, which is what we're all in the business to do here, is there's so much, we call it the gold in the atomic content method here at Proudmouth. There was so much gold there that we could have just taken all sorts of clips. Screw Larry. I love Larry. Don't get me wrong, but screw Larry. She was so tight on her talking points, just bam, bam. And they were a good 30 seconds. So much great content there. And she yeah. had great eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to show this one here and Matt, you hundred percent touched on it. We could have stopped this clip at any point, right? So right now this clip is a minute and 14 seconds. If I wanted to shorten that, I can remove Larry's question altogether, right? And again, simple highlight, delete, it's now gone. Um, and the conversation or that new clip would start right here with, I guess this is how book fairies has really taken a hold. 
right? And that's a whole new clip. Um, it doesn't include the question, but it still has such an impact. It's all still there. Like the whole meaning of why this clip is is, is good is still here. Um, and yes, uh, Amy was a wonderful guest. Um, and we can, and again, like she did leave us other points. Like I even thought like um, we could have even stopped it, you know, um, it gives them an additional three more years schooling than a child coming from a bookless home yeah, and thought, right? Yeah. That is still a full, complete, fully yeah. impactful clip. Um, maybe it's a little short, um, but if I went back and then included Larry's question, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's it's um, a little more meaty and, and, and can draw more people in. Um, so yeah, amazing stuff. Um, again, using Riverside, even if you're not using Riverside, I always suggest getting a transcript um, or watching your content through again. Um, you can use the other tools where you plop in the whole thing and it picks the most viral clip. Um, but I think it's really good for you to take the time to kind of analyze this stuff. Um, it can give you an opportunity to give yourself some feedback, right? Like maybe I need to stop talking so long on certain things. Maybe I could give my guests a little more guidance on shortening up an answer. Um, so that we can create this clippable content, right? This this stuff that's going to help draw people in to the longer form stuff. Um, so yeah, this was an amazing uh, episode just released. But anyways, um, this is the stuff that I look for when creating these types of clips. Now, um, in Riverside, I said we could do a ton of different stuff. So we can actually add in if we wanted to, and I suggest all videos include this, is the captions. Mm. Uh, because if somebody's on a, a certain social platform, they might not have audio turned on. If they don't have audio turned on, they could still get a lot of what the messaging is. What's really cool, and this is where that brand consistency ties in, is I can start to make this really hit home with all of the, the Midland Financial or the Midland Money Mindset branding that we have. Um, so we can change the the way that we highlight, right? Do I want it to be a purple highlight and, and hit on that part mm. of the coloring for the branding? Or do I want it to be yellow? Um, I like yellow because it reminds me of a highlighter. We can also go in and choose the size of the, the, the captions, right? I like large and I usually try and stick with one line. That's my personal preference. I just think it looks cleaner. Um, and... That's, that's adding captions. We can also add like branded borders, logos, backgrounds, spacing. Um, four captions, and this is just something I'm gonna add in real quick because I think there's a lot of value in it. Um, there's definite zones of the video that I would avoid putting these captions into. So we don't wanna put things down towards the bottom because on a lot of social platforms, that part of the video gets blocked by other stuff, right? Whether it be, this is the name of the channel, this is this, that, the other thing, it can get blocked out. The same thing goes with the very top, right? It often gets blocked by other stuff. If you're on Instagram or YouTube on your cell phone, sometimes the stuff over in the left-hand side is also blocked by the share button, the like button, all of that stuff. So, um, I would say those are like the avoid zones, but what's really important, and I see this done and often uh, I think done poorly is we have the captions, like we'll pick like a, a safe spot outside of the areas we want to avoid, but we'll put the, let's say we put the captions down here. When I'm watching this video on my phone, because I'm like a, I'm attracted to what's moving. I'm going to start reading captions more than I'm looking at the person speaking right and i think that sometimes takes away from it like we have a video for a reason and we don't want the caption to take away from that that like that conversation or that connection we're trying to have with the audience so oftentimes i'll say let's move the captions maybe as close as we can to the bottom of someone's chin um on their neck so that at least if we're reading the captions we can still see their face hmm. i think that's something really um important that we we might not think of all the time, but I think the placement of the captions is really important as well. Almost as important as having them is where we put them. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Katie in for some some uh, color here. So Katie, when it comes to the captions, 
so Chris said that he likes the single line. Do, do you have any sort of feelings or data or experience on what the captions in, that, that you have seen or that you prefer? Yeah, and this is one of those where I do try to be neutral. I said, some things hurt my soul, uh, but I do try to be neutral on a lot of things. I sometimes prefer two lines because mm. I'm a lot of people do captions where it's like sometimes like every single word is coming in and I am getting motion sick just watching yeah. it, right? Or like every word is like getting bigger and I'm like, I'm having an anxiety attack, right? Mm. So like also think about just what are your personal preferences and also what do you think works well for your audience? You know, if you're trying to attract, you know, tech professionals that are in their early 20s. Cool. That might look like one thing. If you're trying to attract people that are already retired in their 70s, that might be something else. So, again, be thoughtful with who is your ideal client. And then, again, be true to yourself. Like, don't put something out there. You're like, oh, my gosh, I wouldn't want to watch this because I'm getting nauseous. But, Chris, I do totally echo where the placement is, absolutely. I, I do too often see them go down too low. And that's a brilliant point. I, I say the same thing. I'm like, you want them to be looking at you, right? So if you have the captions too far, then you are completely defeating the point. Because again, we are a very visual person. If captions are there, even if the audio is on, our eyes are likely going to be watching those captions. Totally. Totally. Um, this, again, Riverside being so great, you can choose different fonts. Um, so again, pick the stuff that I think will showcase best across all platforms. Um, super tiny writing or script writing, I don't think serves for captions. It's hard to read, even though you might think it is tying more into your brand. Like if that's part of what you have in your branding, I would still stick for something a little bigger, blockier, um, and just ultimately easier to read. Um, yeah. So, um, from here, you're going to export, um, once you have your clip. Now, um, we can look at different options, right? If we're making this for um, like Twitter, things like that, or we want a square um, video, you can do that as well, right? Riverside has a great option to switch for any platform. Um, yeah. And then you would export it. Uh, and that's, that's how I would suggest doing that. Um, in other programs or like, let's say you don't have Riverside. Um, a lot of us are very familiar or comfortable with Canva. Um, and this is something that we can utilize as well for creating this type of content. So you would just simply go in, find the design that you're looking to create. Um, you're going to choose what it is that you're creating. Um, so for us, if we're doing like a reel or a YouTube short, um, Instagram story, Instagram reel, this is that nine by 16 um, aspect ratio that I was talking about earlier. So from here, not as seamless or not as easy, you're going to need to do a little bit more in terms of the editing, but it's still available. Um, so I have it already queued up here, both parties. Um, if we're looking to do the stacked kind of YouTube short or whatever we want to call it, if it's going on LinkedIn, it's going on LinkedIn. Um, we can still do that. Try and find the, the halfway point. Canva's really friendly with how that happens. Um, so something like this would look good. Um, you would then find the part of the conversation that you're looking to clip. And then you can just split it. Delete the other stuff. Um, this is not going to be perfect at all, but just kind of demonstrating what it could look like. Um, again, like we're creating something super, super quick. This is a 30 second clip. I don't know if it's great. I wasn't listening to it. Um, but this is again, starting to create that content that's going to be accessible on all different platforms. If we wanted to have just the guest, um, on there, but still include maybe some of Larry's audio, if he is talking, we can just go straight over that video that's in the background. It'll still play, but we won't see it. So then we can have 
whoever that we're trying to highlight or spotlight, they can then be the ones talking. We can still hear the other party um, and it allows us to, again, create that content um, that's hopefully going to resonate with the audience. And that's like, that's what I think the, the two kind of different ends of the spectrum. This one really accessible to anybody. Um, you can even do it on the free version of Canva, right? Like you don't need to have a pro version or anything like that. You can create those, those clips. Um, but if you're looking to invest a little bit more into video, which Proud Mouth has done, um, Riverside does take it to that next level where it's kind of all in, all available, all encompassing, the whole thing can be done right from this platform. And that's, and that's where um, I say there, there are lots of other platforms as well, right? And so I think Matt, oh, like, like oh. we certainly see advisors can get analysis paralysis of like, do I use this? Do I use Descript? Do I use Opus Clips? Do I use, what do I do? And then never do anything. And uh, that's what we're here for is to kind of say, all right, what works with you and your team? What makes the most sense for you? Uh, and then guide you guys. Cause you know, some people are be like, Hey, I love Canva. Others don't love Canva, right? Some, so just know, as you guys are thinking like, okay, it's overwhelming. What do I do? talk to one of us. Absolutely. All right. I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing the screen back. Yeah. Please everybody be patient with me to make sure that works well. It worked well. Yay. All right. So Chris, uh, actually both either of you. So, so yes, there are all sorts of programs out there, but there's kind of two huge ones, right? So there are three, there's Zoom, which we all know how Katie feels about Zoom. We've got Riverside, right? But then there's StreamYard. I know a lot of people are using StreamYard too. Katie, we don't use StreamYard. We opted to do Riverside because of everything Chris just freaking showed. But do you have opinions about any of the other programs before we move on? Yeah, so I would use StreamYard if you really are live streaming, right? Or or restream. So the the ten minute marketing makeover you've mentioned my my weekly live stream because the whole point is live streaming. I use restream. Same thing as StreamYard. Um, but if you're really just recording for you know to publish it later, Riverside all the way. It's way less expensive than StreamYard. It has everything you need. Um, I would make it easy and just go with with Riverside and great audio and video. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and dive into a couple of other examples. Um, Chris, can you see the Q&A? Uh, yeah. I can. Okay. Can you look at that, Chris, and answer Andrew? Uh, we'll answer him live in just a minute, but th that's a pretty... Thanks, Andrew, for typing us a book, brother. We appreciate that, man. Uh, but cr Chris, if you could look at that, and then I'll bring you in to answer that. So I just wanted to give you a, a couple of examples. So so we had brought Jeremy Hauser up previously. Um, what, one of the nice things about, about Jeremy is that... So this is a very, very specific advisor mentorship podcast. You can start seeing the brand here, right? And then when you really move on look at all the consistency that we have here. And and Katie, I don't know if you helped him with this video, uh, but this video up at the top here is about as good as video gets as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but tell me what you think about how this is all playing out on social. Yeah, well, and Matt, can you go back one? Because I did put that other one, uh, that other thing in there real quick, that uh, video on the left. So uh, one point that I really want to make there. So uh, Brendan Murphy on the top there, uh, he works with Proudmouth. He also works with me and he's in Jeremy's AMP program. So we've got a lot of love going on here. Shout out <laughs> to Brendan. But Matt, can you see how many uh, views that video has gotten there? Yeah, 93,000. 93,000. So uh, this was a bit of a fabulous beginner's luck. It got like 89,000 in the first 24 hours. Brendan didn't even see it. I saw it on Instagram, like took a screenshot and sent it to him. But this is the power of it, right? Like that got in front of a lot of people. And you never know, like one point I just really want to make here, you never ever know and you never will know what content is going to take off and what content isn't. So one thing I always tell advisors, whether it's with your podcast, video, or any other content, you will never get a return on investment of time you spend overthinking things, right? <laughs> Make a lot of these little tweaks that we're talking about, but just get your content out there. You have to get it out there and let the universe bring it back. Tell you whether it's working, whether it's not working. There is no way Brendan ever would have guessed that this would have gotten over 90,000 views. 
Now, but but Instagram is one of those things that I don't think advisors really understand the power of. And I, Katie, I know that that's something that you have leaned into. And Chris, actually, one of the things that he's helped build for Proudmouth is our Instagram strategy. But is there a preferred social media platform that you think works better for really firing on all cylinders here? It depends on your audience. Um, absolutely, right? If you're working with people that are already retired, don't be posting on LinkedIn. That's not where they're at, right? If you're trying to reach that gen alpha, beta, kappa, whoever they are, right? Don't be posting on Facebook. Like you have to figure out and you have to have a clear target audience and then know where they're at. But across the board, YouTube, everybody's on YouTube, right? Yes. Search engine. If you're in YouTube and you're asking a question of like, you know, when should I take social security? A lot of times you will see videos pop up that can be your podcast where you answer that um, in there. So YouTube, absolutely. And then choose the social platform or platforms where your audience is. Chris, do you have an answer for Andrew? Yeah, I think I think Andrew's answered his own question um, <laughs> using, like, you know, like he's saying he's used things like Descript, like Loom mm -hmm. um, for LinkedIn videos. And I think that is great. Um, I think the whole thing should be choosing what you have available to you. Like Katie said, use what's comfortable, use what works for you. Um, Loom, we use it all the time for our internal training stuff. Um, because it, it is so easy to use. It allows you to kind of share your screen, show stuff and record on top of that. I think that's amazing. I've even used what's it called? photo booth on my MacBook, right? To record video, right? Like, um, and then you can put it, you can use it anywhere else, edit it anywhere else. Um, as long as you have that MP4 file, you can use whatever tool is best for you. Um, so I don't like saying like, use whatever you want to use and not give a concrete answer, but definitely Loom, um, Descript, um, like Photo Booth. Um, as long as you're able to capture high quality video, high quality audio, you can use anything. Um, as long as you are formatting it for the platform you're looking to use it on, um, I think that's all you really need to focus on. One thing I will say, and we kind of talked about it earlier too, is, um, like the quality of video that you're choosing to record in does matter. Um, Katie talked about 4K being this like huge thing that's being put on this pedestal, but so much isn't optimized for 4K video. Um, and it might not serve you as well. You're gonna have massive file sizes that are a pain in the butt to upload, download, move around where 720 would have worked very well. Um, and taking up a lot less space, a lot less of your time, um, and still come across perfectly on all platforms. Yeah, and if I can add two two quick things on there, I'm glad you touched on the on the 4K thing. The thing that I always tell advisors, we're like, I got a 4K camera, I'm recording in 4K, and I'm like, cool. Which IMAX screen are you showing on? <laughs> right, like that's not where people are seeing your content. It does not need to be right. I live in Las Vegas. It's not showing on the sphere. You like really don't need. 4k and Chris you're absolutely right like we tell the clients we work with we're like do not record in 4k I was like we are not dealing with those files because it's it's just not a good use of time 1080 is like true HD perfect like that's all you need and yeah if people are on their phone 720 is um is fine and then the only other thing with like uh Andrew's question like posting to uh LinkedIn or any other platform always 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 no exceptions to this rule post video natively and that means actually have the video posted. So like if you're recording in Loom, do not post a link to a Loom video. Even if you have it posted on YouTube, do not ever post a link to YouTube. Post that video so that when you're scrolling through, the video plays. And that's because, right, if that's how we all want to see it. And then the platforms don't want you linking elsewhere because their whole business is keeping people on the platform. Well, if anybody else has any other questions, make sure you put them in. But uh, listen, this is a wonderful example. And I'm just going to quote Jeremy Hauser very quickly here that he says, look, authenticity can't be faked on the screen, right? And if you follow the Advisor Mentorship podcast or any of his videos on his YouTube channel or any of those things, you're going to see pretty quickly who Jeremy is. And we're just using Jeremy as an example because he's a good dude. He's been a wonderful client, uh, but but just so if you want to make that human connection, I just interviewed Brian Portnoy for our 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 
uh, Top Advisor Marketing podcast yesterday, and he calls it human first advice, right? And, and if you really want to make that human connection, we know that video is the way to do that. People are attracted. Chris said it. I, you know, I'm, I'm attracted to things that are moving, right? And that's absolutely fantastic. You have to have you have to have a video component, and then the the wonderful thing about podcasting is the portability of it, right? It's very very hard to go for a run and watch a video. I mean, maybe some of you can do it. I would fall down, uh, but I can yeah, I can I can, and I'm not going to drive and watch a video. But if I want to, if I hear a podcast and I'm like, oh my god, you know that Katie person seems really cool. I'm going to YouTube Katie. Or I'm going to Google Katie, YouTube's going to come up because she's a video person, right? And I'm going to be able to experience the Katie-ness. Please, I want everybody to understand how important that is. But with that, Katie, we're getting close on time. So I want to give the chance to, for you to talk about the, this new program that you have. Yeah. So uh, the main thing is, right, advisors are like, oh my gosh, there's all these things to do. How do I do them? Just like Proudmouth helps you all with podcasts. I help you all with videos, everything from soup to nuts in 12 weeks. We build that foundation. So you've got your audio, lighting, background, framing, camera, your whole setup done in, and you're building comfort and confidence on camera so that at any point you can easily and authentically use video. And when I say authentically, I know some people are like, ah, oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard. I mean, I want to make sure that we have the exact same person showing up on video that I would meet in person. I don't want some weird robotic version of you. So building that comfort is the thing that's key. And even for people who are like, I do virtual meetings all day long. I'm great at presenting. Cool. Once you hit record, our brains tend to like short circuit. So I always explain is like, even if you're really good at playing football, that doesn't mean you're going to be good at playing soccer. Like it is an actual different skill set to learn how to be comfortable and confident on camera. So the next 12 week advisor workshop kicks off January 14th. So as you guys are mapping out, okay, I wanted to do video. We run through everything. We launch your YouTube channel. Cause if you're in growth mode at all, you got to be on YouTube. We give you two edited videos, YouTube thumbnails, YouTube banner, do it all for you get you out there oftentimes in coordination uh, with Matt and the team. Cause a lot of people are like, yep, I'm in growth, but I'm doing podcasts. I'm doing video. I want to do it. Well, I want to grow. Uh, and we can make that happen uh, for all of you. And I always like to invite people. If there are any questions afterwards, you're like, I forgot to ask that. If you're like, Hey, I had an aha moment, mm -hmm. head to my website. There's a little talk to me button in the bottom, right? You can send me a text message an audio message, or uh, I always try to respond at quickest to video messages. <laughs> I wonder why that's not on brand at all. Uh, and I just put a link to uh, the website in the, in the, um, in the webinar chat. And, and of course, so I'm going to talk about playing nice in the sandbox with Katie, because I think a lot of you think that, that you, well, we're just going to use the podcasting video and that's all we're going to use. Well, some of the podcasting videos that we create, especially with how Chris just showed you how we build all of the stuff on the proud mouth side, um, that isn't a great video for your website, right? And so when you're really looking for a really high quality introductory video, you know, that's going to talk about you and your firm, uh, that's what's really important for you to utilize Katie services for that. Um, it's just, and then of course, once you go through that program, then when you're shooting video with us, your performance level is going to be a lot better because listen, uh, I'm going to just... Uh, talk about use the football soccer analogy here just because you're great on a podcast doesn't mean you're going to be great on video and yeah. uh as evidenced by the example that we used earlier where you know he was down here right because he didn't know how to use the equipment that's what we're talking about here to make sure that this works incredibly well for all of you and listen we do uh so we we do something similar, uh, but we create the podcast. We do the video shorts as Chris had showed. Plus we write you social media assets. That's called our managed influence service. And if you'd like to know more about that, you can either click the link that I just put in there, or you can go ahead and scan this QR code. Please, please, please listen. One of the cool things and one of the reasons why Katie is just one of my favorite people in financial services, she's very responsive and very interested in providing you with education. Even if you don't hire her, which you should, you know, she's putting out great content on social media all the time on LinkedIn. Please make sure you're following her. If you're not now, you're missing out on some great content. And when do you do the, the marketing things? It is every Thursday. It is the 10 minute marketing makeover at 10, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Yes, we are adorable. Uh, so join us. We're live on LinkedIn and live on YouTube uh, with like your lifelong best friend, Matt, uh, Derek Pollard.
Yeah. Totally. Uh, I have known him since he was 13 years old. Uh, and so, yes, I have known him forever. So wonderful. Thank you, Katie, for putting your link to your social media profile, your LinkedIn there. Listen, everybody, we want to thank all of you for joining us today. Please make sure in 2025, you have to start doing video. Video is king, podcasting queen. It is an and, not an or anymore. And if we can help you, we'd love to. And if Katie could help you, she would love to also. So for everybody here, we'll see you guys on another webinar very, very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. I don't know. Do, 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 do. Gotta try to stop this thing. Here we go. All right. Bye, everybody.